Hey guys, it's Gabby. Thanks for joining me. So today I want to pose a question to you. Is your home studio actually good? Mm. Is it? Yeah. Are you sure? Mm. Like really sure? Uh. How do you know? <sighs> mm. Let's find out. Like a lot of people, you went out, you bought gear. I know, I know. If you've watched my other stuff, you know how I feel about this. You know, you know. But let's assume, let's assume you went ahead, you did it. You did it, okay? I'll forgive you, it's okay. You went out, you bought a mic, you bought an interface, you bought, I don't know, some acoustic treatment, right? And you put it all together, you got some software, and effectively you have a studio it may not be top of the line but it's a functional recording space nonetheless but is it good is it broadcast quality above broadcast quality below broadcast quality does it sound right is it problematic are there issues that you may or may not even know about how do you know here's the deal and there's so much content on the web and in voiceover, just throughout voiceover, um, about studio and tech and gear that I know it can become completely overwhelming. Um, but I'm a big believer in the ends justify the means. I, I don't really care how you got there, okay, truthfully. I don't care what gear you bought. I don't care what you spent on it. The proof is in the sound. Is the sound quality good or not? If you are relatively new to audio recording, to voiceover, to audio production, to all of this stuff, then somebody, not you, <laughs> with more experience, with a more trained ear, has to assess that recording. Something out of your studio, dry, raw, very raw, to help you determine if the sound quality is good, if it's usable, okay? And if it's not, what steps can be taken to improve it? There are people who do this. It's a really common thing, believe it or not, but it's not something you can guess, okay? There's no guessing in this. You have to know with certainty because just because you went out and you bought the gear does not mean there's not an issue you're unaware of. And the last thing you wanna have happen is that you start answering auditions or trying to build a demo or you know, put yourself out there in the voiceover world and then come to find out your studio sucks and you didn't know it and you kind of made a fool of yourself. There are loads of people in our business who offer studio assessments um, and they're really accessible and really great people. So I'm gonna give you some names. George the Tech Whittem, he is the dude that most people think of first. Um, he has a really long standing following in voiceover. Um, he does these uh, assessments basically where um, you follow the instructions on his website. He also has like a waiting list that's, I don't even know how many miles long. <laughs> so you gotta be patient because it might take him a while to get back to you. But you follow his instructions and um, he will get back to you and let you know, okay, here's your situation. Here's what I'm hearing. It's basically kind of a pass or fail sort of thing. Tim Tippett's is another guy. He does a very similar thing. Um, his methods are a bit different. Tim gets a little bit more uh, hands on. Um, uh, Tim is the guy I use for pretty much all of my tech needs and great guy. Can't say enough about him. Um, he's another one that I highly recommend. Dan Leonard is another guy who actually um, is partnered up on a podcast and on a YouTube channel with George Whittem. They do a bunch of stuff together. Uh, Uncle Roy um, at Antland Studios. Uh, gosh, um, Mike Delgadio from Booth Junkies, who you may know from YouTube. There, and, and a lot of other coaches do as well who are less technical, myself included. I do what I consider to be a pass fail. Now, I'm very upfront with people about saying it literally, I do a pass fail grade on your audio quality, meaning if you fail, I'm going to refer you to one of the people that I just mentioned in this video. Um, but if you pass, hey, yay for you, then you're in great shape. 
And that's sort of what you need to have happen at this point if you've already gone ahead and built a studio. Now, if you know somebody who works in pro audio and you trust them, great, you can go that route as well. I would caution um, that, you know, if it's one of those, hey, you know, my cousin's a musician or eh, maybe not. It's again, what we do is a little bit different and you wanna make sure that you're meeting up to the standards that exist in our industry. So it's wise to have somebody at the very least who works in pro audio from an advertising or um, multimedia production background. That would be helpful. TV, film, radio, broadcast, that sort of thing. Um, somebody has to validate that studio that you have now built. That's your mission. Because until that happens, you really don't know if what you've got is up to standard. Because realistically, if you don't, you're not gonna book work. Because here's the thing, everybody else who's in the same boat you are and just built a studio, that's what they're doing. They're making sure that their studio is up to snuff. So yeah, make sure you do it. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video helped. If you want more on tech and studio advice, take a look at this video here. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it, it looks something like this.